All right, so today we're going to do magnetic fields. Um, so before I start talking about magnetic fields, uh, let's talk a little bit about electric fields since they're sort of related. Um, what creates an electric field? Charges create an electric field. And what's the law that tells us how electric fields have a shape through space? You guys remember? Coulomb's law, all right. And for the E field, it's uh, K, Q over R squared, right? And so charges create the electric field. So of course, it's, de it's linearly dependent on Q. You double the charge, you double the electric field. And it falls off 1 over R squared, so it gets weaker as you go away. Um, there's also another law connecting this to the force law, the Coulomb's force law, because the Coulomb's force law is K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And then it's a vector. And so that's F is equal to, help me out, Q, E, right? So this should be a review. Uh, so uh, a force is an interaction, so it requires you know, two charges. That's why there's two charges here. Um, the electric field exists everywhere in space. So it's created by a charge, but it exists everywhere. So this is um, a field and force is an interaction. Any questions on that? All right, and I drew a little picture here. Here's a point charge with the electric field coming out of it, and I drew this vector a little bit shorter than these vectors to kind of demonstrate that it's weaker further out. All right, does anybody know what creates magnetic fields? Nobody. Okay, so you're all going to learn something new today. Usually I get the, the answer is magnets, and yes, that's, that's true. That's not quite the answer I'm looking for. We'll get to the answer I'm looking for. But yes, um, if you have a magnet, it creates a magnetic field. And instead of talking about positive and negative charges, we talk about north poles and south poles. Okay, that's so we don't get confused between what is magnetic and what is electric. So we have the north pole and the magnetic fields come out of the north pole and they go into the south pole. And so they create this sort of butterfly looking picture here. It's called a dipole. Dipole means two poles. All right, you might say, well, can there just be one pole, like a north pole or a south pole? And the short answer is no, there can't. If you cut you know, or break this guy in half, what you'll end up with is the north pole stays over here, but it, sort of a south pole happens there, and the north pole happens here, and you just create two new dipoles. So there's a, a force law for B fields very similar to this force law. It also has a Q in it, except now we're going to have a V cross a B, where this V is velocity. Velocity of what? the charge, yeah. So it's the velocity of the charge. This, this cross here, this x, is the cross product. Uh, the cross product is defined as a vector cross b vector is equal to the magnitude of a, the magnitude of b, sine of the angle between the two vectors. And so I like to say that if you stare really hard at this x here, you might be able to see a sine theta in it. You guys see it? Yeah, OK. All right. It's just it, there's a cross product and there's a dot product, so we d differentiate the two. One has a cosine, and this one has a sine. And so that's sort of our physics shorthand for doing these things. Uh, any questions on this? So this is analogous to electric fields, except for magnetic fields, it's dependent on the velocity. So what's the force? on a stationary particle in a B field, in a magnetic field? Zero, right? Because the velocity is zero. Zero times anything is zero. There's no force. So you have to be moving 
the charge has to be moving in the magnetic field um, for there to be a force, a magnetic force. All right, uh, B, so we didn't call him M because M was already taken. Sorry about that. Um, B was picked because Maxwell was a famous scientist. He used B, and so uh, we keep using it. Uh, we run out of letters, so sorry if these things have weird names. So let's talk about magnetic fields of a wire. So I have a wire here. I'm running a current through it. And uh, turns out if you run current through a wire, it creates a B field around the wire. All right, and this was discovered uh, a long time ago, roughly 1820s by a guy named Orsted, if I can spell his name right. Orsted. And this was a big deal. And the reason it was a big deal is because, I mean, the Chinese and other people had discovered magnets. But uh, no one had realized what actually creates the magnetic field in the magnet. And so when he ran this current through the wire, and he put a little compass next to it, and he saw the needle move, he realized that moving electrons is what creates the magnetic field. So just like you know, charges create electric fields, currents or moving charges create magnetic fields. Those are two important concepts to remember. Charges create electric fields, currents, moving charges create magnetic fields. All right, and, and he was excited because this, before these were two different subjects. There was electricity and magnetism. And there were some scientists who were doing electric stuff, and there were some scientists doing magnetic stuff, and now they could connect them, right? It was, you know, charges, you know, electric things create the magnetic things. And so now it became what we call E and M, electricity and magnetism. The two forces were combined. Any questions so far? All right, so if you put a current through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. And the magnetic field goes around the wire. And it's proportional to the current. So the B field, if you double the current, you double the B field, which makes sense since currents create B fields. Um, and it's inversely proportional to the distance from the wire. So it gets weaker as you go from the wire. Not inverse squared like the electric field, not quite the same, but it still gets weaker the further you go away. Um, there's this mu naught, which is, I always get the two confused, the permeability. Is that the right one? Permittivity. Permittivity of free space. Um, it's kind of like that epsilon knot for electric things that's hidden inside the K here. Epsilon knot, but for magnetic things. And then there's a two pi. That's just sort of there. And then I put a phi hat. What does the phi hat mean? So I'm calling this the phi direction. So just like over here, we had an R hat for the radial direction. Just every, every vector is, has a magnitude and direction. This is just telling us the direction. So what's the magnitude of phi? One, right? If physicists are lazy, we get tired of saying around the wire, around the wire. So then we just say phi means around the wire. Okay. So don't get confused by that. Epsilon naught is four pi times 10 to the minus seven. Tesla meters per amp. And so the units for magnetic fields are Teslas. Symbol of the T, that's the SI unit. A commonly used unit is the Gauss. 
It's not SI. Gauss is another famous scientist you've probably heard of. G, and I think there's 10 to the four Gauss in one Tesla. So one Tesla is a big unit. This always happens in SI units. So when they create the SI units, once you set some units, other units are kind of set by the units that you pick. And so just like with capacitance, farad was a huge unit. You know, most things aren't a farad in capacitance. Most things aren't a Tesla in, in B fields. They're like milli Tesla or smaller. It's very, this is a very big unit. That's why uh, Gauss is more convenient. Um, all right, so if I plot B versus I, I'm gonna get a linear plot, double I, double B. This is what you guys are gonna do today. And if I plot B versus one over rho, which is the distance from the wire, since it's one over rho, it should also be linear, because one over rho is linear with B. Um, what is the slope for these? How about this one? If I wanted to write the slope, So if this is our y coordinate and this is our x coordinate, our slope is, what is it? Y over x. Yes, y over x, what, this is, okay, so it's b over i, which happens to be equal by this equation to, good, mu naught over two pi rho. All right. Everyone see it? And this one, the slope is so I'm doing B, which is my y coordinate, and one over rho as my x coordinate. So what's the slope? Everything that's left over, right? Mu not i over two pi. All right. Uh, the Earth has its own magnetic field. Um, there must be some currents going on. I'm not a geologist, but you know, there's some flow of magma or something inside the Earth, and the Earth's spinning. So therefore, there's some charges moving, and so it creates a B field, which is a good thing because there's a lot of cosmic rays and solar wind coming at us all the time. And from what I hear, this guy does a pretty good job of protecting us from radiation. One thing I want to point out, though, is that it's about 0.5 Gauss, which is, you know, I don't know. It's the magnetic field of the Earth. You know, I don't, I don't know if you can say that's big or small, um, but it's there. Depends on what you're comparing it to, right? And what we call the North Pole is the magnetic South Pole. So the geographic North is the magnetic South, which is a little bit confusing. So our compass is their North points to the south, right? So their north points to the south, which is, which is the magnetic south, which is what we call geographic north. So up here is where you know, Santa and his reindeer live. It is the geographic north, but the magnetic south. <laughs> Any questions about that? All right, one thing I want to point out is that north is this way, just so some of you guys know. Um, and I want to demo this because I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so if everyone comes up, I'm going to show you guys. 